Welcome to Malcolm Reed's How to Barbecue Right, a podcast where we talk about barbecue, share recipes, and discuss all things delicious. And now, here's your host, Malcolm and Rochelle Reed. Hey, welcome back to the How to Barbecue Right podcast. I'm your host, Malcolm Reed, joined by my lovely wife, Miss Southern Shell. Shell, how are you feeling today? I'm feeling fantastic. How about yourself? I'm feeling great. I'm feeling great. I figured, uh, you know, we did a couple topics we're going to talk about today. Some yep. pork steaks, one of my favorite cuts of pork. And mm-hmm. we're going to talk about some cocktails. It's booze and shrimp day here. <laughs> it at is. We're, test- right. we're testing and tuning. I got a few new drink recipes I've been working on to release with the newsletter weekly. And we're going to... Uh, we're testing out some testing out some bowl. crawfish bowl today, but it's not crawfish season, so we'll you know we're going to use some shrimp. We'll talk about that. We're just going to crawfish bowl the um, sides and some shrimp and crab <laughs> legs. So we're, it's use it's the same seasoning, you know. Um, don't tell me my job ain't fun. <laughs> so what are you doing today, um, Oh, it's booze and shrimp day at the, at the <laughs> it's office. Booze and shrimp day. <laughs> Dang, that sucks. Don't know booze and shrimp Friday. <laughs> That needs to be like something we do all the time. Um, so I wanted to talk real quick about uh, Pensacola Butcher Shop. Yes. Um, Hurricane Sally hit the Gulf Coast down there. And um, y'all have heard us talk about it before. It's one of our favorite places to go to for vacation. It's about six and a half hours from us where we like to go down in Orange Beach, Gulf Shores area. The hurricane came right, right through there. Yeah. I mean, right over Dolphin Island, right up through. Gulf Shores, Fort Morgan, cross back up through the. You, you know, said the Orange dock Beach, that Pensacola. we, the dock that we used for this past fishing trip. Past fishing trip's gone. The yeah. bo- the dock's gone. The boat, um, a buddy of mine talked to Captain Mike. Captain Mike's charters down there at Dolphin Island, and they said their boats are okay. They got they took them back up, I guess, the intercoastal and and uh, you know tied them got up them or whatever. Way, yeah. Got them out of the you know the worst spot, but then now they have their marinas down there. Yeah. Um. We went out with another captain out of uh, on the Wild Orange out of Zeke's Marina there in Orange Beach, and it's completely destroyed. His boat was okay, I heard him say, but he didn't know when he'd be able to charter again because they don't have a marina to go yeah. out of. So, yeah. and from just the 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 pics and all the the you know the images you saw coming back from that, it was just devastating. I mean, there's parts where um, I saw was it in Navarre or somewhere over close to Pensacola. Or Destin, where it showed just like twelve foot of the beach was gone. It was like a big cliff. Like that's how much damage the surge did. You know, just twelve reshaping foot. the coast. Yeah. I mean, it was it was crazy. Like they had, had you know how they had the steps coming down from some condos to go to the beach. Yep, it was just a drop off after that. Like the steps went down. They, the steps were still there, but it was just the beach was missing below it. And it was just it was amazing. So I can't imagine if you own property there, you're going through all that. Our you know, our thoughts and prayers are with all those people. Yeah, definitely. Especially, you know, uh, you know, our buddy Kevin over at Pensacola at the butcher shop. I sent him a text checking on him and he said they were okay. They fought some flooding at their home. The shop was okay, but he switched to I mean he's, he's I saw a post just a while ago. He's open for business today, but he's still feeding first responders yeah. and you know, police and, and paramedics and firefighters and all that. Anybody needs a barbecue meal, they're doing that at the shop. So if y'all are in that area helping out or anything, you know, stop by and, and you know, just tell Kevin we're thinking about him. Yeah. It's, I mean, you know, you never know. <laughs> that any, I mean, you know, these hurricanes and tornadoes know. and all that, it's crazy. I mean, it, it, there's nothing you can do about it. It's scary. Other thing. than get out of the way and shelter and then hope that, you, you know, you've got something to rebuild when it's all over, but. At least there wasn't that many lives lost. I know that you know you never want to hear of life lost, but there was, I think, one death that I heard of yeah. due to it. But there's no telling how much damage it's done. They shut down yeah, tourism. The like they, yeah. they want, they're not letting anybody uh, in or out. Of, I mean, in Gulf Shores, or I mean, if you can go out, I guess you should have been yeah. out. But um, if you're not living there, they're trying to you know give like ten. I think it was ten days. They've closed tourism down so everybody can kind of just assess the damage and make repairs and, and hopefully get back to, to you know normal but i'm sure you know being in the south we'll all rally and everything will be you know back to normal one day it's nothing new for a lot of these people on hurricanes i couldn't imagine going through it but um you know there's more brewing out there too we're not out yeah, of hurricane the, season yet yeah so. didn't you say there's five storms that's what i heard there's like five more you know possible storms out there I mean, well Never fun. Yeah, everybody say a prayer for yeah the whole the Gulf, Gulf Coast. Coast. Yeah, um, everybody, Kevin. 
this past Sunday, our baseball practice was canceled. Yeah, <laughs> it was. Luckily. And I said. We only had two practices on Saturday. We didn't have practice <laughs> on Sunday. And I said, well, what do we got in the freezer? Let's let's cook something. Let's do something. That's right. And I had, what did I pull out? I pulled out a pack of pork steaks. Which, Where'd you get those? How'd um. You- you know, I, I keep some pork steaks oh, in the fridge now. Me. I love it. Yeah. That's when I was like, why don't you go? <laughs> Instead of going and buying something yeah. new, let's go get put some use to something in the freezer. Yes. I uh, also had some elk sausage I brought out. There was yeah. like two kinds of it. It was like a Cajun elk sausage and a green onion elk sausage. Those it was good. really good. It was really good. But uh, you could highlight. Tell it, you could tell it was wild game in that elk sausage, but it was good. Yeah. You know, you know it what was made really it so good, good was the Balance. fat content. Yeah. Uh, one of Michael's baseball, Coach Josh, uh, Gave me that. He goes elk hunting up in Wyoming, elk, mule deer, antelope, and he brought some back and wanted me to try it. So I, you know, I, I, he gave me several packs of it and I, I knew it was good, but I never cooked it the way I did. Um, so it was a, it's a fresh case sausage. I'm, uh, he had it made, uh, some little meat shop down there, um, on like, on like Pontchartrain before you go over the, you know, the big causeway. Yeah. He said, I mean, yeah, I, I don't there, know where that's at. Area. You know, if it's, um, it was some of the best wild game sausage. It was really good. I needed. I you know, he said he drives down there and takes the meat down there and has them processed. He says wow. it's not cheap, but man, it's good. Whatever they're doing, you know, they make some good sausage down there. Boot in. Yeah. Just do you have to take it down there and drop it? Yeah, it's just like a meat off. processor we use. You just take them. Could you drop it off like on a Thursday? Go hang out in New Orleans and pick it back up mm, on your way. Out no, today. he said it took like. <laughs> So it, I'm it sure they a process while. a lot. Yeah. So it was, you know, several weeks, and they call you back, and you come back. So it's you get to make two trips. So yeah, you could do a week, you could do a weekend <laughs> drop off trip, and then a weekend pick them yeah, up trip. Yeah. That'd be fun there. That's a good idea, Shell. You gave me an idea. I've but, been uh, wanting to go to New Orleans. I got an itch. Yeah, hey. Um, you ain't got to twist my arms to go down there. But so, so how'd you cook this? Uh, so the sausage, fresh case sausage, I treated it. And I've never done this with wild game sausage. I do it with brats all the time yeah. just because I love to cook brats, and it's, it's simple. Uh, I get a half pan, you know, half aluminum pan, put my sausages in it, um, thawed them out good before, you know, just um, I, since we got them out of the freezer that Sunday, I put the pork steaks and the sausage in the in the sink with a little water, and they were thawed out within like 30 minutes. Yeah. It didn't take long. So I got them thawed out, and I put them in the pan, cut up a little bit of onion, Poured in two cans of beer and set my Traeger on 275 and just set that pan in there. And does it matter what kind of beer, beer you? No, use? I think I had. You used some um, beer we got from a. Yeah, it was <laughs> beer from. <laughs> it was beer that was just a, in the beer fridge beer. Yeah. What's it called? Golden Archer? Yeah. It's a local beer? Uh, no, I think it's a new, like. Oh, it's, it was anyway. Golden Archer or something like okay. that. Yeah, it wasn't my favorite beer, but it, it's great for sausages. And that's what, you know, when you're doing that, man, you used to. Milwaukee's best, or you know anything <laughs> bush lattes. Best. You can use whatever when you're boiling sausage, you know, because that's what you're doing. Uh, I mean, you know, a lot of people say that they like to cook their sausages first and then put them over in the beer and simmer them like that. But and, and maybe that is the correct way to do it if you're from Wisconsin. I don't know, but it's not how I do it. Yeah. I got my own way of doing things. Well, you already my, got it cooked by that so point. It's not going to... Exactly right. Over. You've already got it cooked and you're not... Get, I mean, you're yeah, you're keeping it moist in there. But what to me, what the beer bath does, and you could substitute water if you wanted to, but what that does is it gives um, it gives a way for the fat to to slowly cook in the sausage mm-hmm. instead of putting it on the grill and then it's, it's cooking and it's rendering too fast and it gives you a weird texture. If you'll... Put the if you get the liquid to simmer in, so it's not going to get over two hundred twelve because yeah. it's liquid. That's just what it's going to boil at. But I'm not really getting it to a real boil. It's just like a steady simmer. Yeah. And so it's it's breaking that fat down slow, and the texture of the sausage is so much better. So you're, I'm cooking it till uh, it took about thirty minutes, but I checked the internal temperature, and when I see it's about one hundred and thirty five, hundred and forty, that's when I want to get it over on the grate and get the outside cooked. Because I know I'm trying to get it to 165 because it's ground meat, but I don't want to do it too fast because the fat the fat changes the texture. And if you've got a good sausage that's got really good fat content and you want to keep that moisture inside the sausage, not bust the case and get it out. You know, I'm not trying to yeah. you know cook it to where it's all you know, make seams in it to where everything busts. That that you lose all your flavor then. Um, at that point, when I take it out of that butter uh, the uh, beer bath, I. Uh, just set it right on the grate on the Traeger, kind of on the side where uh, the heat comes from around the heat deflector. 
and it'll brown that sausage up perfect. It's, yeah. I mean, it f- less than an hour is the total cook time on a whole pan of these, you know, fresh case sausages. So if you were cooking brats, you probably cook a dozen of them, less than an hour. And I promise you, the 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 flavor, because you get some of that smoke flavor from the grill, but the the texture's just right because you cooked them they're steaming juicy. in the beer bath. They're juicy. But the, it was good. It was but awesome. They pop, you know, casings pop. That see, they're not going to do that coming out of the beer bath. That's why you need to put them over on the grill and dry them out. That's what makes that snap. And to me, that's the perfect sausage. It is. And I've seen a lot of say, people say that's not how you cook brats. That you're supposed to put them in that beer bath and simmer them at the end or whatever. Well, if that's what hey, you want to do, do, fine. You. you do you. But I like my casings to be just right. I like them to be juicy on the inside. And I like that fat cooked properly. So it's not like I'm biting into a glob of fat. It's kind of slowly broke down. And, and simmering does that. Um, and you know it'll do that with chicken too. There's a lot of people that <clears throat> that's a way that they do chicken wings. They will boil them or parboil them first. To get that fat broke down, and then they'll move them over to the grill and get them real crispy that way. And I've never done a video on it, but I've yeah. cooked them like that, and they're really good because it breaks the chicken, it breaks that fat underneath the skin down more. Yeah, that you're not going to do unless you take the time and do it slow on a grill. You know. Yeah, yeah. So it makes it. I may need to. I may need to do an experiment on that and show the difference on how to, how to. Hey, um, you know, we haven't done an experiment in a while. Yeah, Mark, let me do. Wing, <laughs> wing experiment. Um, I love wings. Be a good one. So, I got a quick question about thawing from the freezer because you sure. said um, we grabbed it and threw it in the sink. Do you recommend thawing from the freezer that way, or is that like a? That's not the ideal way. Yeah, that's my hurry up and get something thawed out so I can cook it way. Yeah, <laughs> but I mean, normally you want to put it in there a day or two ahead of time, let it have time to slowly thaw in the refrigerator. That's you know that's, that's the ideal. best way. That's ideal. But if you got they tell you not to do that because you, I guess you risk contamination. You don't know what was on the packages and all of that. And to get what in the oh in the sink, you know, yeah, not the meat's going to get contaminated. You're going to contaminate other stuff, and then it's not in a, well, it's not in a controlled temperature. I mean, I've thawed out whole briskets in a cooler with water before. I mean, there's you know desperate times call for desperate measures. <laughs> I put a daggum hog in your bathtub one time and <laughs> thaw it out. Turkeys have been in there a bunch. It just depends on what you got to do, you know. You gotta do I don't think seven. it's, I mean, that's one of those uh, do as I say, don't do as I do yeah. things. Because, I mean, when it comes time to get something thawed and I got to cook it, I got to, you know, you got to make it happen. Yeah. Make sure. Was that yeah. Yours? That was mine. I put it on silent, though. That was reminding me that Michael's allowance got paid on his little kid debit card thing. <laughs> so you um, did the pellet grill pork steak. And that was, so that was number two meat. Yep. And... I feel like we got to have a discussion about pork steaks and how great they are because they don't get a just like enough pork credit. steaks in general. Yeah, pork steaks pork in general. Steaks. So let me tell you about these pork steaks first. They were froze. I'd had them in the freezer. But you don't remember where you got them from? I, they either came from Super Low or Kroger, and I had to butcher cut them. Oh, okay. Um, and so I thawed them out, and I'd never done them this way before. I just seasoned them. Um, the only thing I put on them was a little bit of AP and a little bit of Swine Life's Mississippi Grind, mm-hmm. and. Um, well, them at on the, the end, I put a little hot rub when I went out yeah. and checked them. Yeah, well, I, I, I threw them on the pellet grill. It was still running about 275. About 30 minutes after I took the sausage out of the bath, I flipped the pork steak. It went another 30 minutes, and I put a. I still had some of that combo sauce left over from the catering gig we did this week, which is 50-50 de-barbecue and vinegar, and I just kind of base it each side with it. And then when I took those sausages up, um, I think they needed to go a little bit longer. I flipped them again, sauced them. And I'd check the temp in them, and they were like, you know, 155, 160. And I wanted them to be closer to 185, 190, yeah. just so they'd be tender enough to cut with a fork. Yep. Not falling apart, but tender. And so what, about 20 minutes later, you went out there, and, and I yeah. said hit them with some hot rub just to give them a little bit more bump of flavor. And I said, hey, baby, why don't you go check them pork steaks for me? I was watching ball. I had a buddy <laughs> over. And, I didn't run. <laughs> you checked them, and what they? I, I think they, they went two hours total at two seventy five, and I went out and brought them in, and just let them rest for a few minutes before we yeah. cut them for dinner. We wasn't like we didn't really have a dinner plan. We just cooked some sausages and some pork steaks, and I made, made a, a side. Sa- I made a pasta salad. Suddenly, better salad. A suddenly, better salad. <laughs> but uh, and and so they you tasted good. them first because I think Michael was wanting something to eat, and you were like, "What'd you tell me?" It's like. I was like, have you tried that pork steak? 
I was half expecting them to be freezer burnt. You know. Yeah, because you never know. I mean, they've been vacuum sealed in the freezer for no telling how long. I was. The last few times I've had a pork steak was at a restaurant and I was disappointed. I was like, eh, I don't think I like pork steaks as much as I think I do. You know? And so I wasn't really like, yay, pork steaks. And then you had the tracker pork steak. (laughs) And then I tried it. And And it was awesome, wasn't it? Oh my gosh. It was better than pork chops. It was. Oh, yeah. Because they were tender. They and they were juicy, and I don't know how they got Fat that content. juicy. Fat con- That's what I like about pork steaks. So that was all I did to them. I mean, anybody could do that. Throw your favorite rub on there, put them on a pellet grill or any other grill at 275, about three-quarters of the way, sauce them, and then just keep flipping them till they get a little bit of and the, charry goodness yes, on the outside. Yes, that makes them, too, yeah. letting that sauce caramelize. Sit on the bottom. Yeah. And that's all I did. But so what is – the pork steak, a lot of people may not know because pork steaks are kind of a, if you think of the St. Louis area and you make a big circle around St. Louis, that's where pork steak territory is. Yeah. It kind of goes over into Illinois, uh, down into the boot hill a little bit, but that's usually about it for pork steaks. I There's didn't a lot of, you know, they, a lot of people don't. Yeah. I didn't know they existed until we went to Murfreesboro. Yeah. Well, so they have them at Mike, Mike Mills. That was yeah. one of the, uh, now I'd had pork steaks. My mom always bought them because she would buy the variety pack of pork chops. And grocery stores were notorious about putting two or three beautiful looking pork chops on top. <laughs> and then underneath was just cheap pork steaks. And then, yeah, so as a kid, I didn't get the center cut chop. I always yeah. got the old piece of pork steak. And it would be thin, and, you know, and, and my mom would fry them or sometimes grill them and uh-huh. sauce them. And it wasn't my favorite cut. So I didn't have high expectations going up to. Murfreesboro back in the day on what pork steaks were going to be. So when they when I found out it was on the, going to be on the menu for one of the uh, classes I went to up there, I was like, ah, you know, pork steak, whatever. So they had a big old hickory, E-L-E-D-X, and uh, Luke Ray was up there cooking. It was back when he worked for Mike before he went to work at Old Hickory. Oh, yeah, I forgot he worked for Mike. And they had smoked the, these thick-cut pork steaks. I mean, and they were like, you know, inch, inch and a half thick. They were beautiful you know it looked like a yeah. big piece of meat you'd want to eat and uh, what it is it's a boston butt or you know pork butt that they take and they slice long ways bone in it you go right through the blade bone and they you know cut you can probably get about six to eight pork steaks out of a butt depending on how thick you like them yep. you know they're about they're a little over a pound each that, that's my idea i like them inch inch and a half that's where i always tell my ask my butcher to cut them and they'll cut them for you when you go to the grocery yeah. store they'll slice a butt for you Works better if it's froze because they can get better slices. It's not, you know, flopping all over the place. But what they did, they smoked them first on the old hickory. And then Luke had one of the trays, like the um, the LEDX model has, since it's a rotisserie, it has double shelves. And they're probably, I, mean, I think it has three shelves, actually, but he had it set up for two. He had the bottom shelf lined with uh, aluminum foil and then dumped charcoal all in it. And he had the other shelf on top. And he was taking the smoked pork steaks and just searing them over the, and, and he was Hold like, up. do not, don't try this with your old hickory. This is not, you know, <laughs> this is not a vibe. <laughs> yeah. It will void your warranty, putting charcoal in it like that, Hold but it up. works. That's what I'm asking. So he put the trays inside the old hickory. Yeah. So he, so he, he had a whole hickory full of pork steaks, Yeah, but he stopped the rotisserie. We're talking took about them off. like a, he, he, we're talking the big one, the, the big one, the yep. big, it's okay. got, you know, these four foot long shelves yep. that are double stacked and yep. it's on a carousel and it spins around. You can load it with butts or ribs or yeah. turkeys, whatever you're cooking. But so he had unloaded all the pork steaks off and then stopped the rotisserie to where, you know, the, there's one section of it right there in yep. front of the door. You open the big double doors and you got your two. So, he, you know, the two sit, two trays that sat there. He took the top tray out, lined the bottom tray with aluminum foil, poured coals all in it, put the top tray back on. So it's sitting about six inches over it. Yeah. And then sauce those pork steaks and went to – Searing them because you know the, the tray is like a, a rack. It's yeah. like just a bar. Uh, I mean, it's grate. just direct cooking. It's cooking grate. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, yeah. It's just like a big charcoal grill but inside it. Inside it. it. <laughs> but he didn't turn the rotisserie back yeah, down. He left it. it sitting there and left yeah. the doors open. And I guess I didn't watch him at the end, but the, he said they did it all the time. They'd take the tray out, or the coals would burn out by the time you cooked through, you know, 150 pork steaks yeah. or whatever. But it was just you're just using it as a grill, and it was some of the best pork steak I've ever ate. I mean, it changed my Change my thinking on pork steak. Yep. And this has been, I don't know, 10, 15 years ago. Oh, it's been forever. It's been a long ago. time. Michael, you, yeah, it was way before Michael was born. He's you 11. came home and we're like, 
baby, I got to cook you some pork steaks. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and I did. I did a yeah. recipe on them, and that was the they very first one I did. Brined or something. And I did them, uh, I think I did them on one of my homemade drums. You did? And they were oh, fantastic. God. I mean, the drum is a perfect cooker for doing pork steaks because you can uh, get it. It likes to run 275 for one, which is a great temperature to cook pork steaks at. And once you get them to the right internal you want them to, to char the glaze on, you just take the lid off and start letting that drum eat. The fire will kick up, and it'll caramelize the sauce real fast. So it's like an open pit, open pit grill at that point, and it chars the outside. So you get the best flavor. You know, It's like yeah. old-fashioned pit flavor. And then you get the char action from the flames coming up and caramelizing the sauce. It's a, it's a pork shoulder cooking machine. So I highly recommend cooking pork steaks. So how thick were the pork steaks we cooked the other day? Like I mean, Oh, inch. they were three quarters of an inch. Three quarter to an inch, yeah. yeah. That's usually what I always ask for. Yeah. I'm pretty I'm pretty sure uh Chef Steve cut them from at Kroger last okay. time I last You time like salt butt on sale or something? Yeah, then. salt butt on sale. I'll ask them to cut it up. I'll vacuum seal it like in four steaks to a package or whatever. Yeah. And, and uh freeze it. So um let's say somebody finds a pork butt and wants to get a butcher to do that, what do they say? You take it back there and say, I want this cut into pork steaks about an inch to an in, you know, inch thick, depending on what you're doing. So sometimes you see them for sale and they'll take that blade bone out, half them and cut those butts into country style ribs to where it's like a two inch piece thick of, of pork butt. It's, it looks like the shape of a rib. It's kind of, you know, I don't yeah. know, it's long and, and not as, it's not the that, whole slice. They take it in half the butt pretty much and then cut it up into into country style ribs but for pork steaks you want to cut about an inch to an inch and three quarters you know, two inches is pretty dang thick. that's too yeah, thick for yeah. pork steak but i have done them that thick there was one recipe where i did i prefer them though. i think it was a jerk pork recipe where i had that jerk pork cut up into big chunks it was either that or one of the mexican recipes i did i can't remember i have to go back and look but you can do all kinds of stuff with it yeah you know, even, I mean, you don't have to do like traditional barbecue pork steak. You could get, you could, you can cook, you can grill it like a, a regular ribeye steak or beef or something. Yeah. You could, uh, you know, go Asian with it. You could go Mexican with it. There's all kinds of different flavors you can put on it. To me, the thickness, um, like that three quarter inch to an inch is just the right amount of surface area versus inside. Yeah. <laughs> versus so you don't back. get dry or yeah, 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 yeah. It's not too, too meaty on the inside. Yes. Yeah. yeah, if I if I cook them thicker, I like to chop them up and use them for stuff. Like if I'm making tacos off that store or yeah. something like that, I'll cook. I'll get it cut into pork steaks because it's easier than cooking the whole butt. It cooks faster because it's in a pork steak, and then you can chop it up. The butt is it's a great, really, really good. I mean, everybody uses it for pulled pork, but really, you can. I mean, the fat content in it is great. The flavor of a you know pork butt is great. So using it for all kinds of stuff is a good idea. Um, We've actually. Uh, you know, a couple of these SCA contests, they started doing pork steak ancillaries. Yeah. They, we had one out at Mark Lambert's. Um, I think Heath won that one. We cooked them on a drum, and they were they were good. I think he cooked this on a drum, too. And uh, I've seen them. Uh, uh, where else did we cook one? Kendall did. Maybe that was where he did real good, too, in a pork steak. And then up there in uh, Collinsville, you know, when we went to, they're still, I mean, they're outside of St. Louis, so it's still heavy pork steak category. Oh, yeah. At their SAA contest, we went up there. They were uh, doing. DMC, they yeah. were doing. That was one of their categories. And I would and I and I got to try a couple up there. Just guys on the street, man, they were fantastic. Because they know what they do. They know what they're doing. <laughs> with pork steaks up there. Speaking of um, uh, SEA cooks, uh, you got one you might be doing with a hog. We I have signed up. Yeah, Mark Lambert is having in Bahia, Mississippi, November. I think it's like the 14th, 13th, 14th, 14th, 14th 15th. Like yeah. Whatever that weekend is, right there, uh, before opening opening rifle season weekend. It's the weekend before they're doing a double SCA Friday Saturday chili contest, and the kick and and the main reason why I wanted to go was they're doing the first ever SCA whole hog, six hundred bucks. You get the hog, you're going to draw chips just like a steak contest, I guess. That determines which hog you get to pick. And I don't know all the details on it. As I get more, I'll find this is going to be fun. That's this is going to be real fun. We're going to break out our old hog trailer and we're just going to go cook an old fashioned uh, killer hog style laying on his back hog. And I think I don't think it's going to have the on site judging and all that stuff. It's just going to be you turn in, from what I understand, 
a large pan. It's probably got to consist of. I, I don't really know all these. I gotta I gotta call Danny Kennedy or Mark and get some details on that. But uh, it's gonna be a lot of fun. It's I can't 13th. wait. I can't wait. It's November thirteenth, fourteenth. Is that when it is? Yep. November thirteenth, fourteenth, Bahia, Mississippi. Sign up. Sign up to judge or sign up to cook or either just come on out to Marks and you can just check cook it out. Steak. You don't have yeah, to. Yeah, you don't have to cook hog. I mean, there's two steak contests, a chili contest, and a hog. So get in where you fit in on that one. <laughs> oh, we might enter the chili contest. You got a pretty good chili recipe. I got a dang good smoked chili recipe. And you know, more that's people my, say that they have won local chili contests. With that recipe, recipe. I know. I need, that's why I need to put it in there. I mean, I'm sure there'll be some some versions of it in there. I've got it on my to-do list because it is getting, man, it felt so good outside today. It did. Temperatures drop. It's yeah, supposed to be only like 74 tomorrow for a high. But it's getting to be chilly weather. And I'm wanting to do my version. You know those big Nathan's uh, quarter-pound hot dogs I've been getting at Super Low? Yes, and they are good. Those, a smoke, smoke those with a Cincinnati-style chili. Where it's more of, you know, chili sauce. It's not really oh, like, yeah, yeah. It's, it's not like, like Texas yeah. chili or yeah, yeah. our style, home, Southern chili. It's, it's more like of, a, a it's topping. More like, it's more like a hot dog chili. Yeah. And now I want to do a version of that on the cooker and, you know, on the smoker, smoke the dogs, make the chili in the Dutch oven on the smoker or on the pit, and then do some serious load it up on a cast dog. iron, cheese, and onions all over it. Jalapenos, maybe. This is Malcolm style chili dog. Yeah, I can't wait. I, I love a good chili dog. That sounds good. Fall makes me want chilies and stews and gumbos and all that stuff. <laughs> it's my favorite time of the year, honestly. <laughs> you do love fall. You love. I'm not crazy about summer. It's hot for a fat man. <laughs> you prefer. <laughs> but fall, like, hunting season's coming, barbecues wrapping. I mean, Christmas it's time season. to start cooking all the good stuff. Christmas is coming. You like. Hunting uh, season's coming. Yeah. You love season. all your favorite holidays. All my favorite holidays are in there, the eating holidays. You got your Thanksgiving <laughs> and your Christmas and your New Year's. And you love uh Halloween too. Halloween's a good one. So um back to booze and shrimp day. Okay. So <laughs> that's so, all we got on pork steaks. Yeah. Try okay. some pork steaks. Is there anything else you want on pork steaks? So I wanted to talk about what drinks we were making. Because the plan is we're gonna make some drinks to take pictures of them. So I wrote Create a few a, recipes. Create of, a, a database of Malcolm's drink recipe. I'm calling them kicking cocktails, man. Kicking My cocktails. kicking cocktails. I come from a long, uh, you know, <laughs> this barbecue <laughs> career. Barbecue goes with a few adult beverages, sometimes more than a few. <laughs> it's just, it does. And it so, lends itself very well to boozing. Throughout my life, I have, you know, had the pleasure of trying some unique cocktails. Some of them I created, some of them my buddies created, some of them I don't know where they were created. <laughs> But I'm doing my best to write down some of the recipes on. As well as you can remember. As well as I can remember on some of them, yeah. But that's what kicking cocktails is all about. So You have the uh, same passion for drinking as you do barbecue. You know, (laughs) as I get older, I I, I have to live vicariously through other people enjoying (laughs) libations. I still, I'm like that, I don't know if it's Toby Keith or whichever one had it. Has the song, and I'm sure a lot of people feel this way. But I'm good. I'm as good once as I ever as I ever was, or however that goes. I'm, I'm not a big Toby Keith guy. I'm not as good as I once was, but I'm good once as I ever was. That's the way my drinking situations go. <laughs> you know, I can tie one on for a good weekend, and then it might take two weeks, at least two. I'm thinking four to six <laughs> weeks to ever to even want any more. I used to, That's you know. Why. Used to, you could just get up and do it the next day. It was like Groundhog Day all over again. But as you get older, I think you have to make a decision. Are you going to still <laughs> drink like that? Or are you going to survive? <laughs> are you just going to live? <laughs> I can't. I don't have time to be a professional boozer. You do kind of have You can't jump in and out anymore. Uh, no, there's no jumping in and out. <laughs> of your nights out and entertaining and <laughs> drinking. But I do have I do have a couple bottles of bourbon in my office right now. But today, so we're going to take some pictures of some of these cocktails. So um, I wanted to go over what are Malcolm's cocktails. I got them pulled up. All right, because you had already you'd sat down and created these yeah, recipes. I wrote down. I don't know. I started a list. I've got several going. I hadn't got them all finalized. That's what we're working on today. It's kind of test and tune day on yep. these cocktails. So being that this is Friday morning and. 
my favorite morning cocktail is a Bloody Mary. Is that number one on the list? I know it's on that list. It's number two on the list, but let's jump into Bloody Mary. Bloody Mary. That's what you start with anyway. That's what I start with. I'm not a fan of Bloody Marys. I will drink pretty much anything else. but It's it's, breakfast in a glass. How can you not like it? It's it's got everything. It's cold soup. I like, I'll drink it like a sip of yours. It's spicy. I mean, I love tomatoes. So yeah, I, I mean, I'm not, and, uh, and so it's cold soup. It's spicy. It's tomatoey. It cures a hangover if you have one. <laughs> Gets the day started right now. I ain't saying drink a ton of them. No. But can't. yeah. Oh, I've seen somebody. I've got a story on that one. But to me, the perfect Bloody Mary, you need, uh, first, you got to have some vodka. I'm a Tito's man, or if you're in Mississippi, you know, if, I, if I'm a home state, I usually got Cathead. Mm-hmm. Both uh, are good. Both are good vodkas. Yeah. You can use whatever favorite you Tito's like. Just stay is- away from the cheap stuff. If you want to get a headache, drink cheap vodka. Yeah. But buy a decent vodka. Vodka's not expensive. It ain't like, you know, spend 100 bucks on a bottle. That goes for all booze. At this point in your life, don't don't get Mad Dog 2020, you know? <laughs> Well, I don't know what Ooh, you are in your life. Right I don't know if I can tell that one on this podcast. What's <laughs> this podcast rated? Let's stick to Bloody Marys. Right. So it's the way I make a Bloody Mary. Okay, how do you make a Bloody Mary? I start with a good shot glass full of vodka mm-hmm. in, a, in a tall cup. I usually go ahead, put my ice in it, shot a glass of vodka. Then I get out my black pepper grinder, pinch of cayenne, a couple dashes of hot sauce. Sometimes I'll put a little shake of uh, Lowry seasoning salt in it. A, uh, about that's real salty, isn't it? Yeah, about a quarter of a teaspoon of horseradish. Depending on how much horseradish you like, I like to bite from a little horseradish, but I don't want it to be overly horseradishy. Yeah, um, a couple dashes of Worcestershire sauce. Um, I like mine dirty, so I put olive juice in it. I put a little pickle juice in it. Sometimes I've been people call them pickle Marys because I don't have olive juice, so I just put pickle juice. Yeah, but then uh, that's. That's the foundation of it, and then this I this recipe you call for the barbecue rub. Is that a, a yeah? You can put you can substitute barbecue rub for uh, the the Lowry's or whatever. It's just to give Could it. Could you some rim flavor. it with? You can rim it with barbecue. You can rim the glass with rub. Um, I usually typically go for um, a mix, and I like. I mean, you can use tomato juice, spicy V eight if you want. If you've got your favorite uh, Bloody Mary mix, for me, that's always around. It's that gum zing zings. And it's one of the it's one of the best straight out the bottle. I mean, it ha- they have some seasoning and stuff in it, but but when you when you jazz it up with all the stuff that I put in, it, uh, squeeze a, always squeeze a little bit of lime in there too yeah. for some fresh lime juice. But I'll take um, whatever glass I'm in. Usually it's a pint glass, and top the rest of it with the uh, the zing zang, and then I'll just kind of toss it to mix everything together. I just toss it back and forth between two glasses, and the last glass is the one I rim. And then I will put fresh ice in that glass and then pour everything through a strainer kind of to get it all in there and get the good, good consistency in that glass, the rim glass. And then comes the breakfast part because you always got to garnish a Bloody Mary. You don't just serve a Bloody Mary in a glass with no garnish. And I like to put a strip of bacon. I like to hang or like get a skewer, a big long skewer, put bacon on it, cheese on it, smoked sausage on it, pickled okra, all green olives, uh, pepperoncini peppers, a uh, uh, stalk of celery. You with, don't do this like on a Saturday morning. Oh yes, I do. Some <laughs> hey, hey, when, hey, I'm I'm a Bloody Mary bar man. If I'm making a yeah. Bloody Mary, this is how I'm making one. Nothing. I'm going all out. Yeah. I'm even hanging shrimp off of it. <laughs> it's a meal. This is my breakfast. This is the breakfast of champions. When you drink a Bloody Mary that I make, it is a full blown. It's taking place of breakfast. You're ready to move on after you have one of these. <laughs> move on to bigger yeah, things. It's time to get the meat on the grill, and it's time to, you know, switch gears. You know, back to your point about um, taking the zing zang and kicking it up a notch. To me, that goes for everything. Oh, yeah. It's like what we call our suddenly be- better salad, yeah. you know. <laughs> taking something, making it better. Yeah. Ain't nothing wrong with that, man. That's that's kind of my motto. Take the package directions you yeah know? i ain't gonna go by that's what you suggest yeah we'll put my spin on it we're gonna add more and that but my style is flavor. more of a it's more of a chicago style bloody mary that's how that's they, where i they, got that's where i got this from from it was a, 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 a drinking bloody mary's in chicago and i was like oh yeah i'm doing what, this what makes it chicago style is it all, all the food? stuff that's in it the worcestershire the horseradish the, the, extra. the pickle juice the lime, uh, olive juice the 
um, hot sauce, all that stuff that goes. It's like Chicago's Bloody Marys will have 25 things. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's could just you, a um, kitchen sink Bloody Mary. Could you mix up a Bloody Mary mix like the night before? The, yeah, you could, the you could. And the hot sauce. And don't put the vodka with it. Just yeah. get all of your. Yeah, you could def- like if definitely you're going do that. To a tailgate or something. Definitely, definitely. Pitcher. I, a lot of times I make pitcher batches too. Yeah. Uh, I don't just make it by the glass every time. Well, a lot of times they have Bloody Mary contests. Oh, yeah, well, you've won I've a won, few. Yeah, I've won a few. Exact same recipe too. Which one did you win? Uh, Variety Club was one that uh, that I won several times. Um, I've had seven. I don't, I've got some Bloody Mary trophies. The problem with I think Bloody- there was one at uh, where's that place we cooked that hog and like to get killed? I had the armed guards <laughs> on the hell in Arkansas. Yeah. I won. I got second place Bloody Marys there. I used to have a little wooden trophy. Remember, I had a little wooden guitar and I had a little. I know wooden- where that one is. You also won like a. A wall clock. A Dale Earnhardt senior wall clock. That was a variety <laughs> club one year. For, I don't know how that, that was a random they got to give. <laughs> they were like, we got to get a trophy. Award. What we got back there? <laughs> we'll give them this. We got a Dale Earnhardt <laughs> wall clock. Number three. <laughs> Go down. <laughs> Never forget. <laughs> Never forget. Yeah. <laughs> you hung it up on the wall. I had it in my office at, uh, when I was working at BHN. When you had a real for, job. Yeah, downtown. The, I would look at that Dale Earnhardt clock for inspiration on how to draw buildings. The problem with Bloody Mary contests these days is it's not about the drink anymore. It's the garnish. Yeah. yeah. Back in the day, you used to could turn one in with just, you know, you a always had to. celery in it or well, something, you know. A lot of times it was just, you didn't want to turn it in with ice or anything. You wanted to get it perfectly mm-hmm. mixed and then you strained it and then we strained the ice out because you didn't know how long it was going to sit there. And they were actually judging you on how that Bloody Mary tasted, not what it looked like or what you garnished it with. Now it's gotten to be, let's see what all we can hang off a pitcher or yeah. glass. You know? Let's decorate a lobster. And believe me, I love all the stuff that goes with Bloody Mary because that makes the breakfast meal of champions to me. But, you know, as far as I want the it, – it should be about the beverage and the way it tastes. Yeah, I agree. And that's where using a good vodka, well, all these other fresh ingredients and – Pickle juice. If you if you don't put anything in there, put a splash of pickle juice in your Bloody Mary. What does that do? It just makes it delicious. Usually, <laughs> I put a pickle spear in, in a garnish too, a good old Clawson spear or something. So moving on. So after the Bloody Mary, the the next one you had was a mojito. That's well, something we've started working on this summer since I had mint. I lo- I love mojitos. They're they're oh my, my summertime. Uh, they have been the official 2020 quarantine drink of summer because yeah. we did that big herb garden and mint was a big part of it. Well, mint was <clears> about the only thing so that would grow. And so fresh. I mean, I even ordered the sugar cubes for yeah. it. I got like a quart jar of sugar cubes that I got on Amazon because, you know, I didn't want to just use simple syrup. We wanted to make authentic mojitos. Yep. Well, I think the where sugar. Do they come from Cuba, right? Is I that where so. it's a Cuban drink? Yeah, it's a Cuban drink. Um, awesome. I think. I Never been to Cuba, but I love the cocktail. <laughs> um. The thing with the using the real sugar cubes in a mojito is you muddle it with your lime and your, and um, your mint. mint. Yeah. So I think the coarseness of the sugar helps break it up yeah, a little. By the time yeah. you break the sugar cubes up, the mint's bruised properly without getting just torn into pieces. Yeah. Because there's nothing worse than trying to use it. Like you don't want to muddle it too much because you don't want all the mint leaves broke up into little pieces where you're sucking them up the straw or yeah whatever. You want it, you want it to get the essence of the mint without getting all the mint pieces in your mouth. Yeah. They are kind of bitter. So how do you make a mojito? First off, you get about, I don't know, eight to ten mint leaves, I guess is what I would say. Yep, it's six, yeah, it's six, six to, to eight, eight mint yeah. leaves. Fresh mint leaves. You put them in a cocktail mixture, like a metal cocktail mixture. Mm-hmm. And then you put in some sugar cubes. I probably got four cubes. What yep. I got on there? Four, four cubes, cubes of sugar. One li- um, uh, Half a lime, lime, but I quarter it so you can break it up easier. All that goes in there, and you take the back of your bartender spoon. It's got the little muddler on it, or if you got a wooden muddler, whatever, and you just muddler is just kind of whooping and mashing it around. It's a masher. <laughs> yeah, it's a masher. <laughs> just think of it as mashing all that stuff around together until it kind of makes its own little syrupy concoction yeah. in there. Then you pour in your light rum. Uh, I'm usually got Bacardi, light rum, and uh, some more lime, some more juice. lime juice. Uh, squeeze the rest of that lime in there. Uh, give that a good little shake, pour it, uh, put it, fill it full of ice, and then pour it in the cup, and then top the cup off with some club soda and garnish it with some lime and maybe more another mint leaf or two. And it's like, I've, and it's 
summertime in a glass. And I don't know if I've never had a mojito. I just assumed I wouldn't like a mojito. Yeah. But when we started making them this summer, I was like, why haven't we been doing this sooner? If you made it with vodka, would it be a, a mosquito? <laughs> a mosquito. <laughs> That's a good uh, I need to add that to it. It's a mosquito version. It's just vodka. It's not Stoliana. I did it's make Stoli's it. Stoli's vodka. You could use uh, orange Stoli's and, and, and a piece of orange in there, too, and make a mosquito. Moscowito. I did make it with um, vodka one time this summer. It's all right. It's not it as good as with good. the rum. Mm-mm. I'm a rum man. I love rum. I usually like darker rum. The darker, the, darker the berry sweet juice. You said, I don't like rum. Rum likes me. <laughs> yeah, I don't like the rum. The rum likes me. That's right. <laughs> That's what I tell the ladies on the island. <laughs> so um, They believe it, too. Mississippi Mule. What is a Mississippi Mule? So a Mississippi Mule is basically a Moscow Mule, but it's made with cod- cat head vodka, hence the Mississippi part. That's all it is. So a Mule is a vodka drink mixed with ginger beer and usually, you know, lime. That's about it. Yep. Ice in a copper mug. I don't know where that part comes from. Yeah. Uh, but it's good. I, it I really, really like, I like ginger. Ginger is one of those, some people don't like it. I love but it. But ginger beer, I don't know if it's alcoholic. It's more like just. They sell it in the cocktail section. Yeah, it's like section. kicked up ginger ale. It's like if you've had, if you've had like, what's the brands of uh, ginger ale out there? There's all kinds of different. Oh, um, Schweppes. Yeah, Schweppes ginger ale, or what do you think of the canned ginger ale or whatever? Uh, they they take it, and it's usually in a little bottle, but it's more intense ginger flavor. It's a sweetened, it's carbonated, carbonated ginger beverage. non-alcoholic beverage. Yeah, so that's what it is. And you just mix it, use it as a mixture, like you would Sprite or anything else. Ginger beer is produced by the natural fermentation of prepared ginger spice, yeast, and sugar. It is a little spicy. Yeah, I like, that's what I like about ginger. You know, and it's good for your Digestive. if you've got yeah if you've got like stomach issues or it a little nausea, nausea or anything. It's good. It's great for it. <laughs> if you're out on a boat, I learned yeah I learned that on the <laughs> on the damn wide open ocean. <laughs> ginger will save you. <laughs> Nothing was saving you. Uh. Uh-uh. It's also a good palate cleanser. That's why they serve it uh, with sushi. I love it with sushi, but that's pickled. Is it pickled or? Yeah, no, that's pickled yeah. ginger at that point. Um, I love pickles. The next one on the list is Cousin Eddie Reed's famous bullfrog. Now this one takes me back. The bullfrog. This it's one is guaranteed to make you hot. Promise. It's more of a party punch. Yes. And we always serve it at our bar. It goes. It's another one of those summertime classics. If you think of a kicked up, all oh, it is a kicked up lemonade. It's a vodka lemonade or lemon limeade, right? Yeah. So you take. The way I've always done it is you get like two liters of Sprite and or seven fifths or half gallons of vodka, whatever you want. You can make a big a batch or small batch as you want. Usually we make like two liters of Sprite, a fifth of vodka. This is just a baby batch. Uh, one can of frozen limeade concentrate. It's over in the frozen section grocery store with the juices and stuff. And then one can of frozen lemonade concentrate. And uh, then you float fresh. some slices. And you float some lemon float lime slices and oranges. Yep. Yeah, just whatever for you looks. Want. You float those in there. So you get you a big punch bucket, and you put your vodka in there, and you put your concentrates in there, and you stir it up, and you pour in your sprite, and float your fruit. And is, we people, always have and it. You better warn people to watch it because it, you don't know that it's got alcohol in it. You don't taste that vodka. All you get is this refreshing lemon lime beverage that you think's lemonade, and it's, it'll get you in trouble. Um. We serve it at Memphis May every single year. And it's so good because you're out there, you're hot, you're sweating. You know, you're always drinking water or drinking a beer or whatever. Yeah. And you just get like, ugh, nothing sounds good to you. And somebody says, so you want a bullfrog? A refreshing bullfrog. Like, yeah. You need some hop, don't you? Yeah, you need a little hop. You need a little hop. So we had it in our booth at Memphis in May. In a big container. Like yeah. you're just sitting up there looking all good and refreshing. <laughs> like it's a lemonade stand. Yeah. And we had a sign on that says, Eddie's. Bullfrog. Eddie Reed. Eddie, Eddie Reed. Eddie MFNR Reed's Bullfrog. Yeah. <laughs> and, That's uh, what it's called. The guys from Thermoworks, they're all Mormons. From they, from Salt Lake City, Utah. Yeah. They came in and were hanging out and helping themselves to the lemonade. I don't think they were. <laughs> he had no idea. They didn't know that alcohol. I felt bad about that. <laughs> he came back the next day and was like, uh, you know, I left your tent and I was 
feeling a little loopy and feeling a little funny. Was there alcohol in that lemonade? <laughs> There's alcohol in every lemonade. Yeah, it's Memphis MA. Yeah, I don't know if you can find some without <laughs> it. Unless you would ever, well, yeah. I, don't know. I felt mean, bad about that. I did. I felt, I felt bad. bad about that. It's felt like, really well, bad, but at the same time, I'm like, at Memphis MA. Every- you should have known. <laughs> we weren't selling this to the public. This is for, this is. <laughs> There's no kids running around here. <laughs> I did feel bad. Oh, man. But that is one of those things when it's hot and it's your outside work. And it's kind of like the haymaker you make. Yes. A little. Those are real you know, summertime, summertime drinks. The haymaker's got ginger in it. And it has apple cider vinegar, which is unique. But it's it puts electrolytes back in you. If you and are having a little summer party and want to get everybody wooing. Get you some bullfrog. Get you some bullfrog. <laughs> bullfrog could guarantee to get them to wooing. The woo girls will come out. <laughs> woo. <laughs> um, now, the next one you have on the list is my one of my favorite drinks. What is it? The Jack and Ginger? The Jack and Ginger. That's the that's that's another one of those. You gotta have the ginger ginger ale or you yeah. could use ginger beer too. So I mean, Jack and Sprite is okay. You Jack like it. Ginger. Yeah, I think you just like saying, Give me the Jack and Ginger. I like the Jack and Ginger. It sounds like it's fancy. Uh, yeah, fancy. What is it? Uh, it's a it's double Jack shot, Daniels. double shot of Jack Daniels at a rocks glass, and just enough ginger ale to get it to the top. <laughs> you don't have to garnish it or anything. <laughs> Maybe stir it. You just definitely not shaking. You just start knocking them back. Huh. Yep, and they go down. You can't beat Jack Daniels whiskey, man. If I'm drinking whiskey straight, I want Woodford. Yeah, but I don't like to drink whiskey straight when I'm out and about, and you know. Well, that's bourbon. You like your bourbon straight, right? Yeah. You like it on the rocks or neat? Just oh no, I like it on the oh, rocks. Right. I want it a little cold. Gotcha. Um, but if I'm out and about doing stuff, you know, Jack and Ginger, Jack and Ginger, Jack yeah. Daniels is a really good whiskey. It is. It's a gentleman's whiskey. I like the gentleman Jack too. It is good. <laughs> the next one on the list is a flaming Dr Pepper. Woo! <laughs> That's one I wrote. Yeah, not many people probably know what this is. But we used to play this game. This this is my flaming Dr. Pepper story. <laughs> we played this game called In Between, and it's like this dollar game that you play and you pull cards and oh, you try yeah, to guess yeah, if yeah. the next one's going to be in between or whatever, and you got to match the pot if you hit on the card or what. It was a it's game. It's one of those quick moving. Yeah, it's fun. quick moving party game. Yeah. And so we got to. It was at my buddy's house. This was back during college, and we got to drinking flaming Dr. Peppers and a flaming Dr. Pepper. Is you, you get a beer, you get a beer mug, and you pour a twelve ounce beer in it, can beer, and then you get a shot glass and you fill it up with amaretto, but you leave a little bit of room on top, and you float one fifty one on top, and you light it on fire, you drop it down in the beer glass on the edge, or don't, don't splash, and you know you got to watch it because it'll get fire all over you. I mean, it's, <laughs> it's, it can get really bad as the night goes on. <laughs> but you drop it down in there and you chug it real fast and it tastes just like you're drinking Dr. Pepper. The Amaretto, the Flame, the 151, and mixed with the beer, it just, it tastes like Dr. Pepper. Who do you think was the first one came up with that? I have no idea. <laughs> I, I imagine. Hey, man. I don't even know how they come up with the idea to set it on fire. <laughs> yeah. You know, why would you set that shot on fire? But it it tastes like Flame and Dr. Pepper. So we were playing in between and I next thing you know, I was, 13 deep like when it got up to over six we started counting you know and i was 13 in and after that it just went black <laughs> and i remember i remember at one point i was outside the house and they had a hill out there and i was just laid out and people would come out there and talk to me and then the next morning i've got to go to work at like 8 a.m i was working at casinos this was like a friday night and i had to be at work how old were you 42 oh, 43 <laughs> yeah, forty two. <laughs> no, I was like, I don't know, 19, eighteen, 20. nineteen. I don't even, I don't even drink an age. I don't think this was young. Yeah, I wasn't even twenty one yet. <laughs> and I woke up with my head like in somebody's spaghetti pot. <laughs> Nothing was in the pot. My like my feet was up on the couch. <laughs> I was still, I, I still had clothes on, but my head was like in the spaghetti pot. The pot was kind of turned sideways, and there was just puke everywhere. <laughs> I felt so bad, but I had to go to work. I was like, oh, I didn't even know where I was, how I got there. I remember going uh, going home. I don't know how I made it home. Oh, my God. I would have hated I jumped in the shower, and I, this was very embarrassing, but I had to ask my mom to drive me to work because I could not drive. <laughs> so she took me to work, and I was working as a bellman down at uh, 
a horseshoe casino, I think, at the time. And we had this closet that we kept you know, luggage and rolling carts for luggage and all this stuff in there. And I just sat in there on one of those carts for about four hours in the dark. And then I remember, so I got to go. And I, so I called my mom to come back and get me. I said, you got to come back and get me. But she came back and she was like, well, do you just mind if me and your dad go over to the casino with Sheraton next door or whatever? We're going to go in there and just play some slot machines. And I, was just, really? I just want to get in the car. So I sat in the car and I said, like, screw it, I'm going to the casino. So I still had my work clothes on, but I took my badge and stuff off and they didn't ID me. So I went to the Sheraton Casino and then they started serving me drinks in there. And that's all I went down You just kept going. <laughs> I kept going. But that was a rough one. That was a rough one. I probably shouldn't have told that story. <laughs> Makes me look bad. But it was a party, man. <laughs> we didn't stay all night or nothing. Um, the next one on the list, Flaming they Dr. just keep Pepper. getting worse and worse and worse as we go down this What's wrong with the, the Flavor Dr. Pepper's bad. I don't recommend anybody try that. I've never tried one. I can't. I don't and I may try one it. today just so we can take a picture of it and video maybe. But Do I don't recommend. To, you can't like sip it. You I don't know. It's it. not a sip it drink. Once you drop it in there, it's all or nothing. It's balls to the wall. You got you to gotta knock it out. <laughs> Can you sip it? This ain't no you gotta sipping watch your content. language. I'm sorry. I, gotta, I give ourselves a PG rating. That's very PG. <laughs> Sometimes you bounce basketballs off a wall. <laughs> <laughs> Just another tequila sunrise. <laughs> That's a classic, you know. Don't hate me because I like the Eagles. I love the Eagles. That's just a tequila sunrise. It's just a... That's not a bad one to start out the day with either, you know. It's not a, have you ever done that? Uh, I was ended a night. <laughs> ended a night with the tequila sunrise. <laughs> it might be a bad nightcap. <laughs> when the sun cart's coming up, it's just like, orange juice, tequila, and grenadine <sighs> with a garnish. You uh, <sighs> you put some tequila in there, silver, gold, whatever you pick your poison. Some fresh orange juice, and you kind of rim it around with yeah. grenadine, and it'll kind of just fade down that in it. Looks, it. looks cool. like sunrise. Yeah, garnish it with an orange. Have you ever had those drinks that you had a bad experience with and just the thought of them makes you go, ugh? <laughs> <laughs> Flame <it> out of <laughs> You know, I, uh, Goldslogger. Goldslogger is my, and I don't know if I can do a shot of Goldslogger right now or not. Uh, this was like a high school graduation party. I remember we were going to be cool and somebody broke out a bottle of Goldslogger. Everybody slogger. had Goldslogger back in the day. And, I, and, I, and back then, I didn't need a shot glass. Just turn the bottle up. Yep. You know, just drinking it Rhino Man style. You know, just right wild. <laughs> <laughs> and I took it. I remember getting a bigger, and I probably drank a whole bottle of it over the course of the night. But uh, it was, <laughs> I remember I woke up the next day and just had gold all over me. <laughs> and we were like a stripper. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like I've been to a strip club. <laughs> and then and my buddy Tater is like, his mom, uh, the next, <laughs> I mean, they were out of town or something. And they come back and said, How did y'all get glitter all over the house? <laughs> it was like glitter. All, it's like, I don't know what we were doing. <laughs> that was crazy. I had a similar experience with uh, peppermint schnapps in Mexico. <laughs> you get Mexico. <laughs> That's two things that do not go together. Peppermint schnapps in Mexico. Getting brushed old, my was that old Mexico or new Mexico? <laughs> it was old Mexico. <laughs> it was very, very old Mexico. <laughs> I couldn't brush my teeth for like <laughs> two or three days. <laughs> <laughs> Same experience with peppermint schnapps. In Mexico. I didn't have the gold. Yeah, yeah. No, I feel you though. There's nothing about Mexico and peppermint schnapps that could remotely go together. <laughs> the next one is you call it "Walk Me Down from the Top." Oh, sweet, sweet Jesus. Jesus! Yeah, that's that's the one you're trying. You end up praying it in the night. That's why I called it that. <laughs> the walk me down. That one I probably first had at Suki O'Sullivan's. The rid, the Suki O'Sullivan's that was on Madison. And did you ever did you ever go to that Suki's in Memphis? Uh, Not the one on Bill Street. I only went to the oh, one on man. Bill Street, and it's I loved an it. Over it's in, my favorite bar. Bill, my that favorite used to bar. be the coolest bar. It was Wednesday night was college night. We would drive up there from Senatobia and from Ole Miss and go to Suki's, and man, it was classic times. But they would make it's a blue drink, so you say, oh, this is a this is a baby drink or whatever. Yeah, you know, yeah, it's blue. you think what it's a girl drink? drink. Yeah. yeah, no, it's no. got it. It's a basically a Long Island iced tea, yeah. which is a little bit of everything, it's and then they do some blue drink. curacao to make it have blue. And they'll put they'll put a little piece of pineapple and cherry in there 
to make you think it's okay. But it tastes it, really good. It's easy going down. It's, it's vodka. It's gin. It's tequila. It's uh, Cor- yeah. Quantra or triple sec, whatever. It's got yeah, all these yeah. different alcohols in it. And and just like a little sweet and sour and some blue blue, blue curacao. That's all it yeah. is. I mean, it's it's pretty much alcohol. No, so you mix them all. If in your you, recipe, you don't have uh, sweet and sour. You have simple syrup and lime. Well, so, yeah, that's kind of that's better. I'd rather have. Then it's not. You know, sour. it the sour mix can get a little too indigesty yeah. to me. I yeah. don't I, too much of that. That's why I like using a simple syrup and then fresh lime juice. It's not near as bad. Um. Then you have Big Mon's rum punch. That, hey, you can't. I love your rum punch. Oh man, I do too. It reminds me of being in Degum, Jamaica, or the Bahamas. You'll um, um, you'll make it. You'll make a little batch and serve I, it to I, me and my friends in the pool. This is awesome. <laughs> Dark rum, light rum, orange juice, uh, pineapple juice, lemon, uh, lemon or lime juice, and then grenadine and bitters. That's what makes it. It's so. It's and then garnish it with a pineapple and maybe cherry with a stem if you want. But that that rum punch recipe, it's I usually do like shot of dark rum, shot of light rum, and then I'll go uh, shot of lime juice, shot of pineapple juice, shot of orange juice, uh, probably a bar spoon or two of grenadine, mm-hmm. and then three or four bits dashes of bitters. Do you um, mix it all up, and then it's it's ready you to serve go. it over ice, not in a frozen. You can't. You can no. Nah, you it's it's this the punch. It's over ice. Yeah. yeah, I mix it all up. Put it over ice. Don't put ice in it. Serve it over the ice. Yeah, you chill it. Strain it. Put water it down. You don't want to water it down. But you stay hydrated with all the good juices. Oh yeah, that's great for you. <laughs> that one's for your health. Yeah, that was that was for your health. <laughs> with all the nice, you know fresh fruit juices in it. Um, never mind the rum. I mentioned all that. <laughs> the salty dog. You love a salty dog. I do because grapefruit and one, grapefruit and salt to me go together. Mm-hmm. And then you throw some vodka in the mix, and it's just a good drink. I, it's, but it's, you drink it in the summertime a lot. I drink it a lot because I guess because you're sweating and it's, yeah, it's like your body craves salt. a little salt. And the, the grapefruit juice is not too sweet, so it's not like you're drinking a syrupy drink. Mm-hmm. It's kind of you know. It's I like grapefruit. I, I just I like grapefruit. It's refreshing. Yeah. yeah, you can use pink or white grapefruit. Um, you sometimes you sometimes that. without the salt they call it like a greyhound, just grapefruit and vodka. But I like the salty dog. I thought the salty dog was gin. It can be. You could. I've seen it substituted. Okay. You I can usually do either use, or. Yeah. The vodka salty dog. Vodka so Tito's grapefruit salted rim. And that's I don't it. need any garnish yeah. on that one. Um, you know, one thing that you don't have on your list, but you've I've got a working them. list. That's just some one recent ones that we're going to test out today that I sent you. Um. I brought the stuff to make all those today, so it's going to be fun. But the one product. thing that's not on here that you really figured out a really great recipe for is a margarita. Oh yeah, it's like, but it's not like a. There's no mix. No mix. It's it's the simplest margarita you can make. You need tequila. You need I like gold tequila. You can, you need a good tequila. You need uh, triple sec, but I like Grand Marnier or Cointreau. You need fresh lime juice. You need simple syrup, and you need some lime. And if you want to splash a beer, you can. But I go one shot of tequila, you not, you not one shot it. of lime juice, half a shot of Grand Marnier or Cointreau, half a shot of simple syrup. No lemon juice? S- no lemon juice. Okay. Just lime. And then squeeze a, a fresh wedge of lime in it, shake it, strain it into another glass with ice that's rimmed with salt. Mm-hmm. That is the purest. And you can thank me later for that margarita recipe. It's really it's, good. It's the classic. It's it's a classic margarita Without all the sweet and sour stuff, and just buy a decent tequila. That's the main thing. I mean, yeah. Ho- Jose's okay. You can get some Jose, but I usually, I mean, I usually spring for uh, Patron. I like a, I like a Añejo or Respado, and then I will use Grand Marnier Cointreau. And there's no headache ever from this this margarita. It's stout because you got a shot, of, you got a shot of tequila, and a hot, half a shot of orange liqueur in it. And we're, I'm serving this in a rocks glass. You could do it in a margarita yeah. glass if you want. I like it in a rocks glass with the rim around the salt. It's perfect for making one drink. Yeah. I don't batch them. I just make it by the drink, have all my fresh, you know, lime juice there. Um, during, really good. During quarantine, when we couldn't get out or go to the Mexican restaurant or do anything, we would get um, Tostitos 
<laughs> salsa <laughs> and make margaritas and eat chips on yep. Friday night. Have Zoom calls with our friends. <laughs> In fact, we perfected a lot of these recipes. A lot of yeah, through quarantine. That got me through <laughs> got me through quarantine. Bar is open. So But those are my kicking those are some of my kicking that's cocktails. The start but of if you're it. into, you know, beverages, hey, to keep an eye out. Yeah. I have some more coming out. What's your favorite beer? Cold. <laughs> <laughs> it depends. I mean, I I like them all. There's not, I mean, I even, I like some of the hoppy. I'm not super crazy about super hoppy, but I do like, you know, Memphis has got some really good ones. Some Wise Acre Brewery, man, Tiny Bomb, those are good. But I usually find myself gravitating towards domestics. Um, Domestic light. And at home, I have Miller Lite, Bud Light, and Coors Light, and Ultras in the fridge, always. Uh, there's Corona in there. There's Red Stripe in there. Uh, there's probably a Guinness or two stashed in there. I like a good dark beer sometimes. A couple of seltzers. Uh, yeah, I've got some grapefruit beer. For the lady. What's the name of that grape? Stig, 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 I can't remember the name of it. I drank one the other day. Um, it's a. It comes from Austria. It's really good. With a shot of vodka, too. <laughs> Are you Do you remember those drinks we used to make? Uh, it was like an energy drink, but it was beer. Oh, sparks! Sparks with vodka. Those those would get you drunk. Those were strong. <laughs> they still make those. That was before the Avocare Sparks. It was like a fence post of this yes. kind of energy beer. Whoever decided yes. to put energy and beer together, we would uh, back in the day. Me and my girlfriends would swing by the gas station on your way out. You grab know, you a Sparks. Grab you a Sparks. It just set the right tone for yeah. the night. Just shot of vodka in <laughs> the ice. Hey. Let's hit the boozing podcast. Although today it was, and it was a lot of fun. We've got to go boil some. We got to go test bowl and make some beverages. But we got other things to do, so yeah, we can't. Get What's too, coming up? We can't have another. Um, oh no, I've got a meeting at one thirty, so this can't get too. <laughs> my my one thirty is going to be pretty exciting today. <laughs> If you'd like to connect with Malcolm, it's How to BBQ Right on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and of course YouTube. If you'd like to connect with me, it's Miss Southern Shell. All right. We'll see y'all next time. Thanks for hanging out with us. We gone.